Hey guys, it's Stephanie here with The Flower Fanatic. Today I'm going to show you how I make an amazing, flaky, fresh tasting apple pie. One of my favorite things is to convert those that say they don't like, like apple pie. So there's been a few of those people in my life that try it and they're like, I don't normally like apple pie, but I like yours. And that really brings me a lot of joy and happiness. The first ingredients you need are some apples. So about seven apples, because you're going to need six cups worth. I actually move on, moved onto my property without knowing that it was going to have my favorite apple trees, Golden Delicious, and they make the best apple pie, but I don't get them till fall. So my second alternative is Granny Smith apples. They're tart, they cook nicely. This one is actually a little bit more on the golden side, which looks like my Golden Delicious, but they're a nice alternative. But in the fall when I have my Golden Delicious, they are just out of sight. <laughs> I love them so much. So I'm going to have six to seven apples, two tablespoons of flour to thicken it up as it's cooking. One of these things, I'm not sure what they're called, an apple slicer and core remover, <laughs> that's what I'll call it. I used to make my apple pie without these and it was so much work to peel and then cut. And until I discovered this, I thought, what was I thinking? Unless you want a thicker slice, then go for it. But this makes it so much easier and it makes making apple pie really easy. And then I have one cup of sugar, some cinnamon, I'll put a teaspoon in, and some nutmeg. And that's it. I made some pie crusts earlier in my earlier video and they've been chilling for about a day. I'm just letting him, them sit here and rest and warm up a little bit before I roll them out. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna start peeling my apples. This part's really fun. If you have kids, they love to be a part of this. Okay, I'm gonna show you how I put this thing together first. It's really easy. You just wanna make sure you have a nice clean surface or it doesn't adhere really, very well and the suction can loosen. I'm just gonna take that and there you go. Let's get all this other stuff out of the way. Okay, we're just gonna take that middle core end and put it right in there. Make sure it's centered, otherwise you'll not slice through the core and the seeds. All I'll do is just start going like this. So it gives a nice, even one fourth inch thickness. Okay, and then you're good to go. I'll throw these in a bowl once I get them peeled and then I'll put the filling mixture in, get my crust ready to go, and then we'll throw them in the oven. I knew that as soon as I started peeling these apples, my one of my most favorite parts of making this apple pie is that my daughter loves to come steal these stringies and eat them. I'm gonna go ahead and measure out six heaping cups. I already have one right here. So I'll cook down a little bit. Four. It's okay if your apples are starting to turn a little bit brown. Five. Six, and I'll just add a few more because I want it to be a little bit fuller. So I'll add my one cup of sugar, two tablespoons of flour, a teaspoon of cinnamon. Spread that around. It's starting to smell so spicy and good and delicious. And then a pinch of nutmeg. I just kind of throw it into my hand. And a nice good pinch. If you like a lot of nutmeg flavor, this is just a mild flavor of nutmeg, add another pinch or two. I'll just start stirring it around. You want to stir it around until it starts to get a little bit wet. It's amazing how that comes together. I love how fresh this apple pie tastes. but also very rich at the same time. 
Rich Mickelson. <laughs> I had to say that. My husband makes a joke with Rich and Rich Mickelson. <laughs> I know that would make you smile. <laughs> See, it's starting to come together and get wet. The moisture from the apples. Set it aside. All right, I got my deep dish pie plate ready to go, a rolling pin, some flour to put on the base of my wax paper right here. I normally use parchment paper, but I was too lazy to go to the store, so I'm using wax paper. Parchment paper is a little bit better, but this will be fine. I'm going to spread a little bit of the flour down here, I guess a lot of it. I just really don't want it to stick. Spread it around a little bit. This won't really affect the flakiness, or it won't affect the flakiness. I know a lot of people use different methods on getting their pie crust into their dish without it breaking. And this one works for me. I know Joy of Baking uses, rolls it out on her rolling pin and then spreads it around. It's a pretty cool technique. I haven't tried that yet. So I'll just spread this right here. All right, let's just roll it. There we go. It's not sticking. Really glad about that. And then I'm just gonna do it, make it in a circle the best I can. And the crust can be pretty thin. I just wanna make it large enough so that it can overlap here. I always want more to work with than too little. The crust is pretty forgiving though, and you can take little pieces and put them in other spots that are thinner. If you had a hole here, you could rip some and touch it in there. All right, I can see the marbling of that shortening throughout. I actually have my flaky pie crust recipe in another video. In that video, I don't show you how I roll it out, but it's a really good recipe to follow. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Okay. At this point, I'm just gonna set this over here, bring this in here and just lift this and gently set it over the middle of it right there. Look how nice that came together. Okay, I already have a pie crust recipe start, or my other pie rolls started to roll <laughs> all right I okay this crust is absolutely to die for it is so flaky it has buttermilk in it and shortening which gives it that perfect flakiness and flavor that you want in a crust okay now we're ready to get our pie filling in it's just been sitting over here mmm as it sits, it really marinates and the juices, I just want to show you that, it starts to get nice and juicy. I like my apple pie to be pretty full, full of apples. I want them to be the showpiece. Before I put my top crust on, I'm going to get a tablespoon of cold butter and just stopple it around evenly. Get it all dispersed. Set your oven to 350. Okay, got my butter in. I'm gonna take my last crust. Do the same thing I did with the first one. Spread it over. Perfection. And then I'll just kind of push it down around the apples. I like an apple pie that has a little bit of lumps because you know it's nice and full of apples and it gives it a nice visual to know what you're going to be biting into. Okay, just take my butter knife and 
evenly edge it here. Okay. And I just kind of squish it together with my fingers like this. There's a million ways that you can do this. Just do what you like. I find this easy, pretty, simple. Most importantly for me is the way the pie tastes. And this one is good. I know some people grab their fingers and do this. <laughs> that just feels awkward to me. Or they'll get a fork and kind of crimp the edges. Or they'll even wrap their crust underneath. All right, we're almost there. If you've never made an apple pie, I would recommend going this route because it's the easiest. Okay. The last but not least step is grabbing a sharp knife and get, getting some airflow. So just do an X. And then we're going to put it into the oven at 350 and it usually takes me around 50 minutes to an hour. You don't have to worry about covering the crust with tin foil or anything like that. You just want it to be a nice golden brown and even the some parts of the crust it will start bubbling now and you'll know that's a good sign that it's ready. And my apples are a little bit on the firm side but cooked through how I like them. Okay, it's pyroville time. I've been letting it rest for a little bit, maybe about 20 minutes so that the sauce can kind of thicken up a little bit, but it's still nice and warm. I cannot eat apple pie. I actually think it's a sin if you eat apple pie without ice cream. So a warm slice of pie, and this is my homemade ice cream. I actually have a video on that. We'll link it up in the corner if you want to try it out. And let's get rolling here. Let's cut it. Ooh, did you see how that just flaked off? My son were here, he'd take this entire slice. It is such a flaky crust. Okay. The first slice is always a little bit harder to get through, but oh, perfection. Look at that. It's nice and dark and golden, but not too runny, but still runny. A little bit runny. I missed that bottom slice with all that goodness. Oh, I cannot wait to eat this. I can smell the cinnamon and the apples. Make sure I get a little bit of everything. That is a darn good apple pie. <laughs> I really would love for you guys to try this, make it, and let me know what you think. I know there's a lot of apple pie recipes out there, but this one is killer. I'm gonna take another bite. Mm. My ice cream is starting to melt. That crust is so flaky, and the freshness of those apples are so good. Anyways, I hope you like this video. I'm going to go finish this, get myself a nice glass of water, and go enjoy a show. All right, we'll talk to you later. Bye. <laughs> Don't know.